My name is Holly Nilsson, and my blog is Spend with Pennies, and I do a lot of uh, Facebook video. Um, I do a other video, but I always gear towards Facebook. Um, and I'm Dorothy from Crazy for Crust, and um, I also do mostly video for Facebook. Um, so, yeah. so we're just going to get started. Um, we. Um, <laughs> okay, so this um, presentation was prepared by Jamie from My Baking Addiction and Emily from Jelly Toast. And um, we are just going to start by going over a little bit of the equipment that you're going to be using when you're doing video. You really, if you're already taking photos, um, you, chances are you already have everything you need uh, to make a successful video. So you don't need a lot of really fancy, s expensive equipment to get, s especially to get started um, in making video. So um, the first thing we're going to um, talk about is the camera equipment. So I do, I use my DSLR for everything, um, but you can use pretty much any um, any camera, any camera, yeah. mirrorless, point and shoot. Um, I know a lot of successful um, bloggers who make video using their iPhone, mm -hmm. so it can be done. Um, and then along with your camera, uh, one thing with video is I notice that it really eats up your battery power. So you're going to want to make sure you always have fully charged batteries or extra batteries. There's nothing like being in the middle of pulling that cheesy dish right out of the oven, go to take your shot, and your battery's like, mm, not today. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, extra batteries are important. Or you can use an AC adapter as well, but you just want to always um, make sure you are prepared for that. So. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is a little bit of a setup, and like I said, this is not my photo. However, it's very similar to how I do my setup. Um, so I have, we have a tripod, and then f extending from the tripod is an arm, which you can buy se uh, separately, and then you attach your camera to the end of the arm, and it can shoot overhead above your surface. Um, the camera, especially if you're using a DSLR, you have thousands of dollars of equipment on there. So uh, when I first started, I was leaning my tripod. I was like, I'll just lean it. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I got lucky, but after a little while, I thought, I have about, you know, several thousand dollars leaning. Um, so maybe not the best option. So it's just something to think about when you're um, getting started. You want to make sure that you're depending on what equipment, but you just want to make sure it's secure. Um, and on the back of that tripod, you'll see the striped, um, that's a sandbag. And you're going to put that on the back because the camera is quite heavy. And most, um, even good tripods aren't quite sturdy enough to um, extend, it. extend. And the, l the further you extend it, the, the less balanced it is. So you just want to um, keep your equipment safe. And I don't use, I don't use the arm actually. I just have my tripod if you have a big enough space or depending on your tripod. I, mine's just um, on the table and I just bend it all the way down and it doesn't show the legs. So it kind of depends on what camera you have, what lens you're using, and what tripod you have. You can test it like before you are like, oh, I have to go out and buy a, an arm. Like check it and see if you really need the arm or if you can get the field where it's, the legs aren't in the shot. In the shot. And also, again, your shooting surface. So, you know, I'm shooting on a small table. My tripod would never fit. Uh, it, the table's about as wide as this desk. So my tripod would never fit over it, whereas your surface is bigger. The tripod can fit over the whole surface. Right. So, so uh, again, an arm, you may need it, but uh, there's ways to work around if it's not something you need. So and then if you're using your um, smartphone, um, you can buy one of these little bendable, I'm sure you've seen them, these little bendable tripods that you can. And um, I did buy a really expen inexpensive one off Amazon, but it didn't hold up very well. Uh, and they're not that expensive. They're, I think the, the good ones, uh, you can get them at Best Buy, or they're around $30. And um, <coughs> I think it's one of those things where it's worth investing a, a couple extra dollars to get one that. Oh, sure. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah, you can um, just grab them pretty much any, any um, electronics store. So, so once you do have your um, setup for your, for your video, uh, one thing you'll notice is that your camera's way up high and it's really hard to see what's going on. You want to, as you're filming the food and getting your shots, you want to make sure that everything you have 
um, everything you're filming, that it's all within the screen. And, and in focus. And, <laughs> and you want to be able focus. to see all of that without getting a stepladder to climb up or climb on the counter or whatever to see what your viewfinder right. is showing you. So how many of you don't tether when you, if you take photographs? So a lot of you don't tether. It sounds like a really, I was like, oh my, I don't know how to do that. It's really hard. Literally, you take a plug and you plug it into your camera. And I bought a, um, a screen at Costco, like a TV screen, and you plug it in and that's it. There's no software. It, it's in, well, for Canon anyways, I use a Canon, but I didn't have to install any software. I didn't have to, there was nothing special to do. You literally just plug it in. And then I just have a little screen. So you can see when, you're, when it's up ahead, you can see exactly what you're doing and make sure everything's in your screen. Could you plug that into your computer? You can, yeah. yeah. So when I when I didn't have um, before I had the screen, I had the laptop. So it's not going to download it. No, no. Like so for tethering, <laughs> I think it's a little like I know people tether for photos, and that's like go, a lot of times it's going into Lightroom or going into whatever. This is more just using the HDMI port on your on your camera to the screen, just so you can see what you're doing. Yeah. Um, the one thing with the laptop, and it depends on how you shoot, it might be upside down. Um, like I use a little monitor, but I turn the monitor upside down because I'm facing the camera, so it's doing it backwards. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, some people don't care. Like it, it, it still like as long as I can see it, it's fine. But yeah, you can just make yeah. sure. So I use yeah, I do use the tethering for viewing only. I still have an SD card in the camera that's capturing all of the actual video right. footage. Yeah. Um, so again, I use Canon. Um, the one it's. It's the EOS Utility, and then there's um, another one for the Sony it's Capture One. I'm not familiar with it because I don't yeah. use the... And the Nikon one, I use Nikon, and I don't have any software. Like, I just, I have a little TV monitor, and I just have it plugged in, and it just shows yeah. what's on the screen, so... Yeah, so, no so this is just um, showing what, what it looks like <laughs> on your TV screen when you plug it in, so you can, you can check the lighting and the focus, and... Can yeah. the EOS Utility show that on your Christos TV screen, then? Yes. Yep, this whole thing comes up on the TV screen. So, yeah. Yeah. As long as it has an HDMI Cape. output, yeah, mm -hmm. then it works. So, yeah, and the screen I got, I bought at Costco, it was not expensive, like hundred dollars or something like that. So, and the only reason I do that is then I'm not unhooking my laptop and hooking it all back up. I can just leave it right. in the room. So. And then this is the Capture One, which I have not used, but it looks very similar. similar. Um, okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is lighting. Um, if any of you take photos, you know lighting is a huge part of it. Uh, I use natural lighting and Dorothy uses artificial, so I'm going to talk a little bit about natural and then I'm going to let Dorothy um, talk about artificial. Um, so natural lighting, of course, has some pros. Number one being it's free. Free is good. I like free. <laughs> uh, number two is that I just love the way natural light looks. Um, so I... I prefer to shoot all of my blog photos in natural light and um, I, I will be playing with some artificial light but I for now I shoot everything in a natural light. Um, there's some definitely some cons. Uh, so things like on days when it's cloudy and the sun is out and all of a sudden it's super bright and then you're in the middle of I don't know pouring syrup and all of a sudden the clouds come and it's super dark and you're looking at your screen and everything's black can't see a thing <laughs> so you know you definitely have challenges using the natural light and you have to shut everything off adjust your is so you know get the lighting right again and then you can start filming again so that's one challenge um, and also a day where the light is maybe uh, fairly fairly even <laughs> there's not a lot of clouds going in and out However, the next day it might be really overcast, so everything's kind of bluish. Or you, so there, it's a lot more work setting up for natural light because you have variables um, all the time. So um, the setup you see here um, is a natural light setup, and that's exactly how I do mine as well. Just in front of a window. Uh, they have a, sh it looks like a sheer um, sheet, and I actually use a bed curtain. So I have like a curtain rod that has little clips on it, and I just use a white sheet. And uh, on days when it's really sunny, I just pull it and it diffuses the light perfectly. So, um, and my window is north facing as well. So that's something else I wanted to mention is when you're doing video, um, I'm sure a lot of you photograph in rooms or areas that are not your kitchen. And I do the same with video. I photograph in a room that's way down the hall. So um, 
you don't always have to shoot in your kitchen. Just if you're, especially if you're using natural light, you're gonna want a space that has a really, <laughs> a really good light for you. So, um, and then the only other thing I was gonna mention that I do is on the side where the tripod is opposite the window, I just go to the dollar store and I buy a piece of foam board and I just set it there to reflect the light back in and just reduces the shadows. Um, that I buy a white foam board from the dollar store and I just um, put it opposite the window so it reflects light back in and it just kind of reduces the shadows in your video. Um, can you guys hear me? Okay. okay. Um, I use artificial light most of the time. Uh, I do um, use natural light sometimes for like my opening and closing like the pole shot or the bite shot. Um, because I'm set up for photos, which I do in, in natural light. Um, but for the actual filming of the videos, I use, um, I have two lights um, that are on stands, and it's kind of like this picture. It's a little bit different. Um, they're set up than mine. I only have two, I don't have three. And so for overhead video, two is probably plenty. Um, and the cons of the artificial light, obviously, is that you have to buy them. Um, and they're, mine weren't that expensive. They were a couple hundred dollars each, I think, if I remember right. But what's nice is it's just even and consistent. And I was finding myself, because I, I videotape almost everything now that I make, and I was finding that I was going insane because I was, it was, there was, it was winter and there wasn't a sunny day or I had to go in the kitchen when it, you know, I was, I couldn't, I was married to the sun and I really wanted to just be able to at five o'clock think, oh, I'll make some cookies and go in and film that video. And so now with the artificial light, you can do it whenever you want, wherever you want. It is bulky. And so I have it in my office and I leave them set up. I don't break them down. So it makes it a lot easier. But if you don't have a space like that in your house, then you would have to think about that, it's a, it's a consideration to think about. Um, and I think, I don't, I think mine are LED panels. I don't, I have yeah. to find the link um, for what they are. But what I do is I have my camera, it's actually not on the table, but it's right behind it. I have like a bed, it's very interesting looking. I have a bed and I have a table and it's like wedged and like over. And so then I have the lights on either side and they are at the same height as the camera that is pointing down. So in sort of like the next picture, if you go to the next one. So they are, um, in this one, they're a little higher, but then they're kind of pointed down at a 45 degree angle over the food. And for the most part, that um, does it really well. I don't have to worry about um, changing my settings or I have my white balance set for the same. And for the most part, it's fine. I just videotape it. And then I, if there's any edits or any like light changes, I can do it in my editor, but um, for the most part, it makes it a little bit easier to do it whenever you want when you're using the lights. Good. Yep. So uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is storage, and video files are huge. So I was about doing video about a month, and um, my computer was like, uh, my brand new iMac was like, <coughs> yeah, you can't do anything. Your computer was completely full, and I was like, <gasps> I didn't realize it would fill up that fast. I knew they were big, but. Um, so what I did was I bought an external drive at Costco. It was not that expensive, two terabytes, and I'm still using it. And I, I have over 120 videos, and they're all on there, and all my raw clips are on there. So it holds a lot. And um, I took, I actually took my laptop to, I, I'm not really, ex extremely technical, <laughs> so I actually took my laptop to a computer place and they moved all my files and they set it up so I actually, when I'm working on video and editing it, um, it's all on the hard drive. I'm working off the hard, the external drive <laughs> so that nothing's stored on my computer because I did find even before my computer was full, it really fills up and then everything starts just moving really slowly. Right. So one thing you'll really want to um, think about is having that ex um, external storage Mm -hmm. to keep your and then the other thing is your SD cards that you use for photographs they fill up with video really quick too so yeah. um, there's a couple of options um, Dorothy I use I think mine are 32 or 64 and I just have several of them um, and uh, you're much more organized <laughs> with your little stickers and so I have I have four and they're bigger I think they're like 128 they're and they're a little pricey and um, 
I'm as of yesterday I'm probably going to change the way I do it. The reason is I have a lot of videos on each of those cards and yesterday one of them went completely unreadable and I have about six on there that I haven't edited so I'm like no yeah. this is a lot of a lot of time and energy so if the cards are smaller I think I could eliminate that but you know a lot of people just um, again take take it download it right away yeah I try you to know, do that they don't um, get put it onto your external drive but it's just you always want to make sure if you, especially if you're doing let's say you're having a video day you're doing the prep and you're doing four videos in a day you want to make sure you have enough room on that card right to film all four videos because you don't want to get to the end and not be able to get your hero all of a sudden on the last video because you're out of space and or that yeah or you are making something and then realize that your memory card ran out after you're done stirring the macaroons together <laughs> and then you ha are out of sweetened condensed milk and have to go to the grocery store again <laughs> and then make it again so yeah yeah, yeah. totally yeah. hypothetical it happened to a friend of mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's just the basics of the equipment and sort of the things you're going to need to get started. Um, but again, there's no, you know, when especially when you're getting started, there's really no need to go out and purchase lots of fancy special equipment. You know, initially it's just getting started, getting your, you know, getting your feet wet and just trying. Like it's, I put off video for a year because I was like, I know I need to do this, I just don't, I don't know where to start. Like, it was so overwhelming to me. And um, one day I was just like, all right, today's the day. I went to the store, by 3 p.m. I had a video on Facebook. So, and, and then everyone got easier and quicker and, and I just learned more and more, so. Um, okay, so once you have your equipment and you kind of have an idea of how you're gonna set up your video, um, we're just going to go over a few things um, that you'll maybe want to think about before, as you're preparing to um, shoot your videos, your first videos. So the first thing, of course, um, because this is make a food video, but the first thing, of course, is you're going to want to choose your recipe. So um, especially when you're starting out, you're going to want to start with something really simple. You don't want, you know, any really finicky steps or, um, you know, a recipe that you've tested and tried and you know it's going to work. So you're only focused on the video. You're not worried about actually making the recipe and if it's going to work out. You're just focusing on the video. Yeah, so. don't start with like homemade croissants. You know, like start with maybe something that has like a Pillsbury product in it or something. Like that's just three ingredients. Yeah, or even a simple salad that yeah. doesn't have to bake, you know, those kinds right. of things. Mm -hmm. um, so the next thing you're going to do is uh, you're going to kind of when you're going to start making, or when I start making a video, I always have a visual, a, a vision. So I, I think I'm going to make this video. The first thing I think is I can just see that hero shot right away. Like that's kind of where my brain starts. I'm like, I can see that, you know, that cheese scooping out, or I can, I can really see that moist piece of cake as I'm slicing into it. So I kind of mentally work backwards. And uh, so um, again, this wasn't our presentation, however, um, they use um, one of whoever, I'm not sure which of the ladies um, this was, but they use a storyboard. So they kind of draw out their shots just to make sure you don't, you're not missing anything. There's nothing like getting to the end of the video and realizing, oh my gosh, I totally forgot to, you know. Add the oil that was sitting on the pan. Yeah, and, and it happens, it. and it will happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can do it with a pen and paper or there are apps out there for storyboards as well they they do have one named here and I'm not familiar with it I looked it up and I believe I, d I don't think it's free I think there's a cost to it um, what I what I find is I I actually just print the recipe read through every step making notes like that of things you want to capture and just really think about how you want that video to look before you even before you even think about prepping your ingredients. Do you want to show yourself chopping the onion? Or do you want to throw the onion in the air and have it land chopped? Or do you want to just pour it from a bowl? You know, so all of those all of those different aspects will go into um, what parts you're filming or what you know, how you're preparing for that video. So you you'll read through the rest I always read through the recipe, you know, you, I think about how I want it to look and what's the hero going to be and how am I going to get there what you know what s steps along the way and what's important for the re for the um, viewer 
to get the full story that I'm trying to tell in 60 seconds. So what steps can I, um, do I need to show? What steps can I eliminate? And you can still follow the story that I'm telling. Sure. Oh, I wish I had to pull it up, but um, but that w I didn't see that one. Yeah, I don't know that one. Um, there, we're going to get to transitions. Yeah, but uh, the onion one. So you guys have probably seen that where you throw the onion up and it lands. Um, so uh, we will talk a little bit more about that later. But basically, what you're going to do is you're going to have your empty bowl. You're going to take an onion. You're going to throw it, and it's going to land in the bowl. Then you're going to take your onion that's chopped and you're going to dump it in the bowl and grab a little handful of it. And then you're going to throw those, those pieces up and they'll land in the bowl. And then you're going to crop them together. So the area, and, and I'm really mindful, like I'll look for like a, a nick on the bowl or a particular onion to hold your hand in that exact placement so that when you do it and then you come back with the chopped onion, it's the same placement. So that's kind of how they work. And when you're doing those kinds of shots, I will throw the onion five times, and then I will throw the chunks five times, just because it, so it's always off a little. And then you can pick the two that match the best, and you just kind of crop them together. Yeah. So those are fun. I, th I think they're fun. Um, um, I. I use Mac products, so um, we will. I'll talk a little bit about the software um, and some of the options out there as well. Um, but I, I, because I use Mac um, products, I use Final Cut Pro. Yep, I think that's all. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so the next thing is the styling, and again, this just kind of goes back into the vision and how, you, how you're telling your story. And it, you know, it will take you a few videos. You won't, you, know, you won't nail the style the very first time. Well, you might, but it took me a lot of videos to sort of be like, oh, this really works for me. And um, this really is a good fit for my blog. And you know, there's other bloggers who I can see their video. And I, I know immediately it's theirs without <laughs> seeing their name. And, and I find the same with photography. Um, so it's just. Um, when it, with styling, like it also depends on if you're doing a rectangle versus a square. Like if you're doing a square video, or you see those like tasty videos, like on Facebook, all you really see is the like the bowl. You're not seeing a lot around it. But if you're doing it in a rectangle form, then you can see those sides. So you have to think about if you want a napkin, like you said, or like a bowl, or some, you know, if, or if it's just going to be plain. Yeah. So you're thinking about those so, sorts of things. Yeah, I often put like ingredients around the sides just to add a little bit of interest. And then if they're cropped off, it's not an essential part of the story. Right. But it doesn't look like a big plain white sheet with just a bowl in the middle. So just things to think about when you're setting up your styling for your video. So prep. Um, I've been asked about time for videos. Um, People are finding or are always asking me, how do you manage the time for videos? They take so long. How do you do three in a day, four in a day? Like, how is that even possible? And the key is prep. It's all about preparation. So I will start the night before. I'll print my four ingredients uh, or my four recipes. I'll lay out four sheets on my counter. Each sheet has the recipe on it. And I'll go through the ingredients, first of all, making sure I have everything. And then, you know, just knowing, especially because I shoot natural, I have a, I have a window. It's like 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. this time of year. And if I'm not in that window, I'm not shooting video, and that's it. So being prepared, um, you know, again, going through that visual, do I need to chop these ingredients, or is that something I'm going to do in the video room, like when I'm down the hall? Um, and then the night before, you know, the things that can be measured, coconut flour, you know, baking soda. I get all of those things out in in clear, separate bowls. Um, I don't. This photo is kind of an example, but I don't I don't label my bowls because each one is on its own pan. But just um, prep, prep, like be prepared in order of the recipe and making sure that you have everything measured and ready to go. That way, when you are shooting video, it's seamless. It's like a natural, you're just throwing stuff in the bowl and it's 
in a row, they're in order, you know where everything is, you're not, you know. And then again, going through being like, okay, I'm gonna need a spatula, I'm gonna need a whisk, I'm gonna need, you know. Cookie scoop, whatever, whatever, yeah, whatever it is. Making. And having all of that, I'm gonna need a parchment lined pan. So having everything prepared, the whole process goes really fast. So I used to, it used to take me three, three hours to shoot a video, and now I can do it in about 35 minutes, mm -hmm. depending what it is, so. Right. You know, but it's just that, you know, having everything prepared, the, the vision, everything from the vision to the actual product. I swear she sent me a picture of her the night before. You had set everything up in little bowls, and you, she snapped me a picture, and it like literally like changed my life. <laughs> because I started doing that, and now I can do three videos like that. Like, yeah. and then I have to do the dishes, but <laughs> that takes longer. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so if you need to label them, you can, but I just, I just do them all in clear bowls. And again, the mixing is the same. I find like, you know, you might need to play around with it depending on your lighting, but the clear bowl, um, especially if you're doing different shots from different angles, the clear bowl just makes it um, easy to see. So, um, okay. About shooting. Go ahead. Oh. You want to talk about shooting? Oh. Or I can? No. <laughs> um, when it comes to shooting, um, let's see. We'll just talk this about these different video. things, yeah. right? Um, I guess we can go to the next one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So with your settings, I'm assuming, like, if you are using your DSLR, that's kind of what I use. So that's, I think, what we were going to talk to. Um, since I'm shooting in, uh, in artificial light, I don't have to change my ISO and my f-stop and my aperture or any of those things very much because it's artificial light. So I have my white balance set to the day, the sun. I think it's daylight. It's whatever that picture of the sun is. Um, and it t turns out pretty good. I only do minor color corrections um, in post in editing. Um, but it, with natural light, it's a little bit different. Yeah, so the same, the same <coughs> things apply to video that, and I did not know that for several months. <laughs> I was like, what? I can adjust the ISO in video? Because <laughs> like, I had all these dark videos and I was like, I, I had no idea. Uh, and so anyways, you can change the ISO, you can brighten up your videos and you change your f-stop um, just like you do with your photos. But if you have an older, like my, I do my side shots with a, like a Nikon D3100, it's like older. Um, with those, like technically you can't change it while you're whatever, but there is, if you Google it, there are ways like workarounds, you just have to figure it out. So, you know, a newer camera, yeah, you'll be able to like just toggle like you would do it when you're taking pictures, yeah. but older ones, you might have to find a YouTube video. Yeah. So, uh, one of the biggest problems I ran into when I first started was that my videos were always out of focus. The, it'd be the hero shot and it was blurry, you couldn't see it. And I, and it, so focus is something I really want to talk about. Um, my new camera, um, which is a um, Canon Mark IV, has um, autofocus. And so I thought, oh, that would be so great. Everything will just always be in focus. But what happens is, as soon as you move your hand, the camera's like, ooh. <laughs> and so all of your videos, you know, it, all your food is like doing some, it's like right. some disco thing or something. So you really, you really just want to use a manual focus. Um, you're gonna turn the autofocus off, like right, I, right on the lens, I turn it off on the lens. And then you're gonna do your focus. And one thing you have to remember is you're gonna have a plane, a plane of focus. So if you're shooting a video from overhead, <laughs> and let's say I focus on this pen, yeah. um, the focus level is gonna be set here. So anything that's the height of this pen is gonna be in focus. If I try and shoot this water bottle, well, now it's now I'm above where I'm focused, so this water bottle's not gonna be in focus anymore. I can move this pen anywhere in this line and it's focused on that line. And so um, what I do is I find is if I have a bowl and I'm making a cake and I'm adding flour and sugar and that bowl's empty, so I focus. Well, I'm focused in the bottom of that bowl. As soon as there's ingredients, all of a sudden nothing's in focus anymore. So all I do is that you um, take your bowl, hold your hand in it, like I'm thinking, okay, cake mix, two thirds of the way, or a bo another bowl upside down, or a pepper mill, whatever, just put something in the bowl, focus at that height, you know, where your um, ingredients will land, and then you're set. So once you start, um, and you don't really notice it, it, that it's out of focus, like if you're throwing in flour, because it's just powder. <laughs> 
So by the time you get to the top of the bowl, everything's in focus. And um, so that was a really big one. And then the same for your side view. If, if you're going to be doing a pour shot, let's say you're, you're doing your caramel sauce at the end, um, you're just going to kind of, let's say I have my cake and it, and it comes up to here, I might like um, hold my hand right uh, just above it like this and focus there. And then when I pull my hand away, the focus is going to be right above that slice of cake where I want that caramel or whatever you're trying to get. So um, anything. And then if you happen to, oh, you're like, oh, and you move your plate for it, all of a sudden that's not going to be in focus anymore. So you just have to be mindful of focus. And um, I actually will shut my, like, stop filming, reset my focus when I move things just to make sure that they're always in focus. Um, so the, uh, this is their picture, I think, of how um, they <coughs> shoot. So the angles, I think, on the next one, yeah. So she shoots underneath, um, but I think we both stand on the other side. Yeah. So um, I'm not underneath my tripod. I'm, like, facing my tripod. Um, so I guess it's just a matter of where your space is, your preference, and how much room you have also. Mm -hmm. So this one here, you can see, um, this is a second angle. And uh, uh, when you're first starting out, you know your first video, really, you're just sort of getting a feel for it. But if you do decide to go into having a second angle and you don't have a second camera, um, you can use, again, you, could, you can use your, um, your phone, phone or um, it doesn't have to be the same camera as um, long as the frames per second are set the same way. Um, but if you... If you do only have one camera, one really um, time-saving tip is to get the same tripod. Have two of them with the same attachment. So now you've got your camera overhead, and you want to do a side shot. You just unclip it, clip it to your, clip it to your side tripod, take your shot, unclip it, clip it back up to the top. So you're not taking that arm off. You know, it's a pain. Don't it, do that. it takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before you move too far past it, um, one thing I want to mention when you're doing. Depending on where you place yourself in relation to your tripod, the arm, your arms might be coming in from the top versus the bottom. Right. Do you guys want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so the way she was filming that picture when she's underneath the tripod, her arms are coming in. Like, it looks like when you're watching the video, like you're making it, right? When I film it, it looks like you're at a bar being served. So, like, I am now to you. So, in post editing, when I'm editing, I rotate myself. Because you see a lot of those videos, and it looks like you're someone's making you the food. So like their people are facing you. I think it looks so much more natural, and when you rotate it so that it's actually like when they're watching, you feel like you're actually making it yourself. So again, that's I think that's also a personal preference on how you like the videos and how they look. Yeah. Um, but that will you know those are all little things that you think about. And if it's overhead, you can't tell that it's been right. You can't tell down. it's been flipped upside down. It looks the same. So. So yeah, these are just a couple of shots of that side shot. And um, one other thing is we were talking about tethering, and I don't know if I mentioned, but my second camera has a little flip screen. Did I tell you guys this already? No. So it has a little flip screen, so I tether my overhead camera, but my side shot, I actually just flip out the screen, turn it around, so I can actually just keep an eye on it, make sure my, you know, everything's in the screen. So if you, if you do have a camera that has a flip screen, even if you're doing it overhead, it's a little hard to tell if it's focused because it's small, but you, you can just flip that little screen and you can see that everything's at least in the frame. Okay. Yeah. So when you're composing a shot, um, you want to make sure that um, you are finding out if you're, think about if you're doing for rectangle, a rectangular video or a square video, because um, where you're putting your text and what's in the shot. You know, you make sure, like you say, you're, you leave your remote in the shot sometimes. Sometimes I just have my dirty towel that I'm wiping my hands on so I don't get it all over my camera, you know, in the shot. And so then afterwards you're like, wait, I can't use that as a rectangular video because it doesn't look right. Um, so definitely when you're, com and when you're, it says when in doubt, yeah, shoot a test clip. Like you can just shoot everything pretty much. Yeah. So the other thing when you're, um, Shooting overhead video is just being mindful of what's on the side. So, like I said, I've got the TV remote, and I'm always I always have it in the shot. I have to crop it out all the time. Um, that and I have seen the back of my head under the right. camera like more times than I count. You know, and I try to like 
keep it back, but you know, it's just like a natural thing. You're like stirring. So, right. you know, it's really just being mindful. When you're reaching for something, you don't want to go right across the bowl. You want to go around. You want to go around yeah, so that, that you can use those clips. And like the camera, my camera strap is the word, like it always falls down. So you have to make sure, you know, wrap it around and those little things that you so, and so when you are composing your shot, you're going to want to um, think about if you're cropping square or if that's going to be rectangular or both. Most of my videos, I, for me, um, for my purposes, is I want a square video because I focus on Facebook videos, so I want square. Um, but I also use the same clips to produce a long, uh, like a rectangular YouTube shape video. So I'm mindful that I have interesting things, so it doesn't so it doesn't look odd when it's in the um, one format. However, that I'm able to crop it as a square and still get everything I need in the in the center. So just a few um, tips for filming. One is I find shooting the um, shorter clips makes them easier to. Um, they take up. They take less time to import. They take less time to import. You know, you might be doing um, something like chocolate chips from the side and um, oatmeal from the top. So you you can play around. If the clips are shorter, it's easy to drag them in or edit them out however you want. Um, and then I'll let you talk about clear the yeah, frame. Yeah, clearing the frame is I and this is something I still struggle with because I'll go to editing. I'm like, darn, my arm's in there. <laughs> but like I always try and like so I'm filming this, right? So I'm going to put this in and then I'm going to put this in. Instead of just kind of like putting it in and then putting it, you want to make sure and pull your hand out and then do it again and then pull your hand out because that way if you're editing, it's easier to separate the things out and put them together as a cohesive than always seeing your arm in the shot. Or if you're pouring, if you have peanut butter or a butter or something that's kind of sticky and doesn't always pour out of a bowl, you can reach your hand in and you're pouring it in, right? Well, it doesn't all come out. So if I go like this and then I kind of freeze for a second and then I get my spoon and I dig it out and then I put my hand like this back and then I come back out because that way I can edit that together and edit out my like, you know, spatula, scooping it out and all that. It looks cleaner and it's faster because no one really wants to see me with my spatula like digging out my bowl of peanut butter. So that sort of thing. I get bored really easily when I'm watching <laughs> Facebook videos and I'm like, oh, okay, let's move on. Next. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so every, yeah, every, everything, just make sure you clear the frame every single time as much as you think about. And, you know, we talked about like the arm, making sure you come in around instead of over the top. If, you know, you're reaching about and like placement of your hand, if you're holding the bowl on one side, you don't want to be like clawing it or like having your hand, you want to make, think about where you're, how you're placing your hand on the bowls and just so it looks pretty and also doesn't uh, like obstruct the shot. Um, and then again, the re repeat specific actions or trying different methods. So that goes back to the onion we were talking about, where if you're going to be throwing it up and um, tossing it in the air might be a better word. So if you're going to be tossing it in the air, <laughs> you don't, you want to make sure you're getting that shot the, the, in the right alignment. So do it a few times. You know, if you're um, the same if you're doing something where you're doing the finger snap, like you've probably seen the finger snap. Again, that's something I do three, four, five times. It, does, it doesn't take very long, but the more options you have, um, the easier your editing will be, the more seamless it will appear. And, and for the finger snap, I, my, my advice is to try a couple different transitions. Don't just do the finger snap because I can never edit that right. <laughs> like it just doesn't look right. So. It's good if you have another transition as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that's the other thing. If you're not sure if you're going to, so I just say film everything. You're like, I don't know if I want to show the chopping, but I might film it. So, um, and then another really big tip is using garnish on your hero at the end. And I know it sounds, um, if you got, especially if you do food photography, you know that garnish can take a photo and just make it like, extraordinary and it doesn't take a lot but the same thing in video whether it's um, you know adding ice cream and it's melting down the side or sprinkling that parsley and watching it fall down on that dish at the end or um, those those garnishes on your hero just make the biggest difference so mm -hmm. that um, is something you want to keep in mind okay 
so the transitions, that's kind of what we talked about a little bit with like the finger snap or the onion throw or however. Um, you just need to make sure that you think about what you want to do for your transition and make sure that you give yourself enough time. Like you said, when you throw the onion up, you make sure that then you get it falling all the way in and then that you just make sure you have enough <laughs> different footages that you can put together or some, take five or six of them so you have what you need. So you might be going, let's say you're, um, you're doing muffins, for example. You're going to have your muffin tin. It's going to have your um, raw batter. The next shot you know is going to be the baked muffins. So how are you going to get from raw batter to baked muffins? Are you going to pull it out and then put it back in? Are you going to lift it to the, to the top and then it comes down and it's baked? So thinking about those transitions or doing both. You're like, I don't know. I don't know how I want to do it. I'll pull it out. I'll lift it up. And then when they're baked, um, you come back and you do the same and you can look at both. So always film, you know, if you're not sure, film extra, but always be thinking about those transitions and how you're going to get, you know, to the next step with still with the story making sense. Because in the end, the video is a story and people do have to follow it and it has to make sense. But always thinking about those <coughs> transitions. So, and the other thing is, you know, um, Thinking about like, for example, if you're making a sauce that has several ingredients and thinking about, um, you know, are you going to show um, every ingredient being dumped in or are you going to show actually the pouring or are you just going to show the ingredient going in? So then it's kind of like that clear the, clear the frame thing. If you just want to show them going in one by one by one without being poured, it's kind of like pour it and then clear the frame. Now you're going to use that little clip when your hand is out and then you're going to pour the next one, clear it's the like frame. It's like a stop motion. The so it's almost two, like a stop yeah. motion, but it's, but it's a video motion. So just thinking about how those transitions are going to be. Yep. And then the editing. Um, okay. Yeah. Editing is, um, I'm not going to go really deep into editing because that's a whole other weekend. It's a whole weekend. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, I've taken like 2 3 days on just pretty much editing. Um, it's so you're going to want to start really simple. Um, if you're using a Mac product, you will have iMovie on your Mac already. It's free. Um, it's a purple star and it's um, it's fairly, like I find most Apple products, it's fairly intuitive. So if you're like, I think I should be able to do this, you probably can. And it's like, um, you know, just at first getting the getting used to the timeline and figuring out how it all comes together. And then once you kind of figure it out, it's it's just intuitive from there, really. And, and um, there's, and a, there's, YouTube there's a lot and of tutorials, tutorials and there's a lot of YouTube video and a lot of content out there on editing food videos. So I don't want to get too much into the editing. This is more about just the actual filming of the video. The um, thing with iMovie, you can't crop square in iMovie. Yeah. That's the one drawback to it. But it's a good, good place to get your feet wet um, yeah. and learn how to use it. So if you are using iMovie, if you use Apple products and you are using iMovie, um, you can not crop square. However, there are um, other, I don't know if they're like apps that other people use that you can, you can act. I don't know what they are because well, I don't I actually. Filmora, right? Is that Filmora one? is yeah. the one? Okay, mm -hmm. so. So the reason why you're concerned with cropping square is because of Facebook? Full for yes. Facebook, yes. yes. So what happens or Instagram. It's still, you can it, still, it still see works. it. Yeah. The, what happens is um, if you don't crop square, so if you have a longer video and it's on a mobile device especially, but um, you're, you're gonna, it's gonna give you this much real estate in, in the Facebook news feed. And if your video is square, it's just gonna really fill up that whole space. It's, so oh, you're gonna mobile. get, so it's going to- It pops more. Pop more, it's gonna provide a better experience and it's easier to um, for the viewers to see as well because it fills the but you can shoot square on your iPhone. You you can but if you're editing in iMovie yeah, yeah I it will, it you'll have black strips have, yeah. on the sides. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, so if you are using iMovie um, it's the Mac product. Then the next Mac product is called Final Cut Pro and that's their p paid version. They do have a th 30 day free trial. And that one 
Uh, I move, uh, Final Cut Pro is two ninety nine, I believe. But just a one time. Three hundred dollars. You just buy yeah. it. No. No. It's yeah. 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 So it's a one time thing. Yeah. And um, I. And the thirty day free trial is awesome because. I took a course on Premiere. Yeah. So Premiere is the the next version. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a Adobe person. <laughs> Premiere, I found even after taking. Um, Show me the what were we? Show me the Emmys. Two days. Yeah. Two, two days, days of editing. Of yeah. editing. I was just looking at going like, all right, I've done a hundred videos. Like I'm pretty. I feel like I'm pretty have a good handle on the editing. And I was in Premiere just going like. Yeah, what, but like I didn't find it, but it, you know, if you're a Adobe, I mean, I can use Lightroom, kind of, you know. But yeah. so if you're an Adobe person where you use Adobe at work or in graphic design or whatever, you're probably more familiar with that interface. Then it might make more sense to you. Right. Um, so if you are, if you do start out with iMovie, which is what I would suggest because it's free, um, you know, try it out, see how you like it. Um, if you do make a couple of videos. Then Final Cut Pro has a 30 day free, free trial. If you know how to use <laughs> iMovie, you're going to go into Final Cut Pro and you'll be like, okay, this makes sense. The buttons, but the buttons yeah. over here instead of up here, but it does the same thing basically. You just have more um, control, more ability to um, fine tune your edit. You can crop square, definitely. Um, you have um, more freedom with your text and um, more transitions, more transitions, those types like of things. So. Um, and, and again, I've used Adobe and I've taken a course on it, but um, I'm, not, I'm not extremely well versed in it. And when I got home, I just thought, the other thing is uh, Final Cut Pro, you're going to get your 30 day free trial and then it's $300, I, I believe. Yeah, it was $300. And then you, you have it. And with the Adobe, it's, um, it's a it's monthly $50? fee. It's 30, 30 or 50? 50. 30, 30 okay. a month. Yeah. So it's a continuous. Um, so you have it for a year, you've already paid for your... Exactly, right. yeah. So... That's for the whole suite or just... No, that's just for Premiere. The whole suite, right. you have to pay this deal. So it's 50, yeah, if you want. <coughs> yeah. And you get Premiere? It is 19 I thought it was Well, because I remember looking and it was going to be 50 I don't honestly... But Premiere also... Student oh, maybe a student version is different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they but do I mean, have a, a student fee. version and, like and they... Fees. I pay enough monthly fees. <laughs> So mm -hmm. Premiere also does have a seven-day free trial. So yeah. I mean, you, you could try it out and see and what see you like, it, see how you like it. But yeah. I, I do find it a little bit even understanding editing. I do find it more challenging. But again, that could. I know other people who just love it. So you know, again, personal preference. But for getting your feet wet, if you don't want to pay three hundred up front, and you have Mac products, the uh, using iMovie, which is free, and then Filmora is like fifty bucks. A one, it's called Wondershare Filmora. It's an app, and it, you can crop to square. So you can import. It's kind of a pain because you have a two-step process then. You know, you're going through two channels. So I found it over time when I knew I was going to be making more videos, I was like, I'm done with that. But I used it for a while, and it worked well. So Wondershare Filmora, $50 instead of $300. Right. Yeah. I ended up paying $300 anyway, but I didn't. It was an experiment because you don't know if you're going to do a lot of videos. It was nice worth it to me. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of having this huge set of software on your computer. Easier, yeah. It's a little easier to learn up front. A little bit. Yeah, because you can hate it. You can hate making videos and you don't want to make another video again. Yeah, yeah which is why, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But which is why I don't suggest going out and buying tons of expensive equipment when you're making when you've never made a video before. You know? And you can also do a 30-day trial, right, of the of the iMovie. Since you both use Final Cut Pro, yeah. Did you buy any additional editing tools? I did. I don't. Yeah, I haven't. The only one I yeah, the o not for text or anything. The only one I bought was the compressor, um, because I found like when I was uploading to Facebook or. Um, I found the files were big and it would take, I would go to upload to Facebook and it might take like six minutes to upload a video and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't have time for this. <laughs> I need it right now. So, um, and I just find it's easier file management as well. So there's a compressor and if you are in Final Cut Pro and you hit the file, the menu comes down and it says send to compressor and if you click that, and I believe it was, I want to say 60, 50, somewhere in there. And same, it's like a one-time thing. And then it just makes the files smaller. Um, 
but the quality is just as good. However, that being said, there are a lot of um, free compression tools yeah. out there. I use handbrake. It's smaller, so when you're saving it on your external, it's smaller? So yeah, it has a, yeah. less time transferring. It's a smaller file. It's a yeah. smaller file. I use handbrake, which is, I think it was free. I don't yeah. know. And, yes, then the, yeah, yeah. and then there's one called ClipChamp that I've used a couple of times as well. And I think they changed. I think you only get like a couple free now or something, but I haven't used it in a while. There are free compression tools out there. I liked this one because it's an Apple product. You go straight from... Yeah, you don't have to remember to do There's no a second step. saving it to computer yeah. or uploading it. So you're running into the same problem, even compressing those files. You're uploading it to compress it. So you're you're already going through that upload process, whereas if you, that's why I bought the Apple one. So, and then music. The one last thing with music is just to make sure you know the people they're really picky about music. Just like you know your photos or your property, music is very a very sticky situation. You don't you have to find royalty for your music or pay for the licenses. Um, um, there are several websites where you can purchase songs to use X amount of times or infinitely if you pay for a membership or yeah. whatever it is. A lot of the, both um, iMovie and Final Cut Pro have like free jingles in the, in the sounds that you can use. Um, and I know like when you upload a video to Facebook now, it app makes you confirm that you have the rights to use the music when you upload the video now. Like, at least that's what I've been getting. Yeah, yeah. same as I have. Um, and But sometimes even with the free ones in um, iMovie, um, I would get it where it would say, you or mu your music has been, you know, copyright or something, and then you just have to go in and be like, no, I, I it's okay, it. you know, because <laughs> yeah. it was in comes with iMovie. But so. um, just be careful with your music. So I use a site called Melody Loops, and they're about, it's about $12 per track. Um, but you can use it. And I can use it as much as I want. So I have like a, I have about like 10 that I rotate through that I like and I just, so you just go in and you can like, it's kind of fun, you choose yeah. your mood, happy or energetic or, and it'll give you songs and you go through and. Melody loops? Was that Melody, Melody loops. Melody loops. Yeah. But okay. also they have it on iStock. Right, yeah, there's yeah. several different ones. Yeah, yeah, there are lots. And there's yeah. like $3, $2. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah there are lots yeah. of different sites, I think. Yeah. I use the Melody loops too because she told me about it. And yeah. I found one I like. So this um, is the video that they. This is their s recipe that they had made for the <coughs> presentation <coughs> video. Working okay, with brands, so. yeah. The last little bit was just about working with brands, and brands are doing a lot more. I'm noticing that a lot more of my um, sponsored work comes with the request for video, or they, you know, so it's just you have to think about um, just things to consider. If it's in your contract, um, you know, make sure you ask the questions how long, because we've all done photos for a company, and then they come back and say, well, we don't like those. And you're <laughs> like, okay, well, maybe you should have told me that first. Um, so talk to them about the length of the video. How many recipes do you want to do? You can work all this into your rate and um, that sort of thing. Agree on you know how they maybe they have a style that they want you to follow. So make sure that you ask all these questions. And are they going to pay you if they don't like it and you want to reshoot it? Um, what format do they want? Music that you want to use? Disclosures. Um, also, if they want branding, like I have one brand now that I have to put like their brand name in the video. So do they want that? That sort of thing. Yeah. Um, a couple of things I'll add to that, just if you are with Mediavine, um, there is a section of the dashboard to put your video rate there for sponsored work. We're seeing that more and more with the stuff from Condé Nast. They want to know if they can include video in their RFPs to the brand's uh, request for proposal. Um, and so if you don't have a video rate set in the dashboard, you will not be considered. Um, and then one other thing that recently came up on a campaign we had with a lot of video was fonts. <laughs> Ridiculously. Uh, we had like five hours of conversations about fonts. Um, so that may be also, if you're working directly with a 
brand, ask them if they have an opinion. Right, because I mean, they might not want Comic Sans or, you know. Right. Yeah. And some like, fonts are pay. Yeah. You know, you have to be careful of that too. Yeah. Yeah. Some are actually like you have to get a license that's for to them. them. Um, most of the stuff that's included with your operating system already has like it's license free. Right. Um, so you can be usually you can be safe using something like Helvetica or Arial, but a lot a lot of times they want something that's a little bit more pretty and customized. Mm -hmm. So you just have to figure out where you are on that. Right. Yeah. And one other thing is um, with brands, if I'm doing a brand video, I usually um, make sure I send it to them. Some brands that I work with are not picky. They're like, no, it's good. And I'm like, how about you just take a peek at it before it goes up on Facebook right. and goes viral and I've spelled your name wrong. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. So I, I actually always say, you know what, I just really like to send it to you just to make sure that it's exactly what you're looking for. Um, because once that video is up and out, it's that's it's not like a recipe where you can go in and edit. Right. It's out, and if it's you know if it's gaining any traction or on social or you know people are liking it on Instagram or whatever it is, you know you really want you can't you can't fix it. You don't want to have to delete it. So I always with brands I do always get um, approval on video just for that reason because you can't edit it. So and yeah I also um, if I am working with a brand I do include disclosure. Um, at the end, I include it at the beginning as well. So it's really important that we're always. Part of me? Confirm how they want to use it. Confirm how they want to use yeah. it, yeah. So, you know, how they want their name used or. Right. Do they want their logo? Do they want. You just type it in. How do they want it done? Yeah. Well, and, and how they want to use the video. Right. Like, oh, yes. Oh, right, they, right. Do they just want it, like, you to just share it on your channels? Do they right. Do they want own it? Do they to share on their yeah. own channels? Right. Like, talk about that up front. So yeah, right. Right, because they're thinking they have rights to it. To then key, yeah, and then you're like, yeah. yeah, no way, I'm not sending you that file, you know. Yeah, and yeah. timing, too. I've had brands say, oh, we want um, a two-minute video and we want a 30-second video. You know, so just knowing, because that also, right from the beginning, that will change your whole story. How are you going to, how are you going to stretch out a cucumber salad for two and a half minutes versus how are you going to bake an entire elaborate cake in 30 seconds? So, you know, it really changes the story that you're going to tell as well. So, yeah. but I, yep. On the other side of that, um, sometimes, sometimes you want to include a product that you're, that you're not necessarily getting paid for right before. Can you, you know, do product placement when the brand has not authorized you to, or are you better off to hide Please it? do. Please. Yeah. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I haven't run into that at all. But no, no. Then. <laughs> yeah. I haven't run into that problem, but I normally just go without labels. I mean, because you never know. Most like, of the time. Unless it's something very specific or it's sponsored, most of the time you won't see you won't see a brand in my video. Right. Yeah. <coughs> Are there any other question? I yeah. mm -hmm. think you had mentioned earlier you use glass bowls. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, well I stopped using glass bowls because I kept getting the reflection of the camera. So I'm curious how do you shoot overhead with glass and not get Well once there's something in it? Okay. Like I think it's just for when you something else. Also, yeah. think of, you can think about, too, um, what your surface underneath is. Okay. Like, I'm shooting, well, because I'm using artificial, it's a little bit different, I think. Um, I have a gray, like, wood slatted right. board. I find I get less of the glare with that than a white, say. Okay. Um, also, use a filter on the camera. Oh, well, use that glare. Polarizing filter. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And also, my bowls, I think, are pretty scratched up, so they're not like shiny <laughs> <He's old bulls>. <laughs> anymore. <laughs> so, does anybody else have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.